Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the Hustle with Heart podcast and our next installment in the Hustle with Heart entrepreneur interview series. With me today is my new friend, Eric Twiggs. And I met Eric because we were both speakers on a Passionpreneur Summit back in August. And I reached out to Eric and we connected and found out that he too is a God-centered entrepreneur and immediately thought as we talked, my audience has to hear from Eric. So let me tell you a little bit about him and then uh, we'll jump into the conversation. So first and foremost, Eric is a founding partner of an incredible movement on Facebook called the What Now Movement. And his mission is to build high performing entrepreneurs, authors, and career professionals who are prepared for life's unexpected curveballs, which guess what? That's exactly what we've had and how the What Now movement was started. He is the author, and we're going to dig into this today, of The Discipline of Now, 12 Practical Principles to Overcome Procrastination. Uh, the book has been, has been lauded in so many ways, um, and, and how he's helping people. I just can't wait for you all to hear from him. So Eric, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Aaron. Thank you for having me on your show. It's an honor. Absolutely. We're so happy for you to be here. So what I'd love to start with, where I start with all my guests is tell us a little bit about your journey into entrepreneurship, how God intersects that for you. So what does that hustle with heart uh, entrepreneurial life look like for you? So it started for me back when I was in college, as far as how I got to the point of even talking about procrastination and time management. Um, I was having a conversation with my friend, uh, Donnell, and I talk about this in the book, and he's urging me that I, I, I need to get serious about what I want to do with my life, and I'm like, man, you need to lighten up. We have plenty of time for all of that. Are you coming to the frat party with me or not? And so, you know, several weeks go by, he and I don't talk, but then I get a phone call from his mother informing me of the fact that he was tragically killed in a car accident. Mm. And it really made me think about time. It made me think yeah. maybe we don't have the time we think mm. to leave the legacy that we want to leave and do the things that we want to do. And time has just been on my mind like ever since. And that was years ago. And so initially I thought it was, okay, I need to make as much money as possible and, you know, get to the top of the corporate ladder and my career and everything else. And so I went out and, you know, got these promotions. I was in the automotive industry. I was a district manager. I had 17 locations, 500 employees. We're winning all of these awards for performance. I'm driving around in my BMW. And I remember this. I mean, there's one day in particular. I'm driving. I look in the mirror, the rearview mirror, and I can just remember seeing my eyes. And they were the eyes of someone who dreaded what he was doing. Wow. You know, so it was like, I, I felt like I was successful, but I wasn't being significant. Mm. And it was just something that was just gnawing at me. Yes. There, there's got to be more. And, and I think that's where spirituality and God comes in because it was like, there was always this, this element of discomfort. Yeah. When I was on that path. And, and you know, when I made, I would make certain moves, like I would turn down a certain promotion and everybody was like, oh, are you crazy? I mean, that, that's the career suicide. And then all of a sudden, like that position would get eliminated. Oh. You know, and so you could just see like there was always that spiritual hand kind of guiding my path throughout this journey. And, and then I started to reflect about, okay, we, when did I feel like I was being significant? And whenever I thought about it, it was always when I was speaking to a group. Mm. And like anytime, so like as part of my job, you know, a while back I was a corporate trainer. And I remember I would always think after I would do like some type of session, you know, I could just do this all day, every day. Or I'd be doing something at church and it's like, man, you know what? This, this really is what I should be doing. And, and so the funny thing is I procrastinated, <laughs> believe it or not, right? So from the time I felt like, you know what? I need to be in the speaking space to the time where I actually started moving was like three years. Yeah. Because all of the voices were like, okay, what am I going to say that isn't already out there already? Who's going to listen to me? Who's going to give me money to come into their organization? But then finally, once I took the first step, when I, when I joined Toastmasters, and then the next step came to itself. Mm. Or started being revealed. And here we are. Mm. 
So that, I mean, that, that's really how I got to this point. And I do think I mean, God's hand was at work the entire time. You know, one of the things that you said that I love, and I think it's so evident as God-centered entrepreneurs that we face is that you procrastinated for three years, but, but that's, that's what we do because we think, well, but how do those ends meet? Who's going to want to listen to what I have to say? How am I going to bring value? I don't even know where to start. How do I find the speaking engagement? How do I find, you know, how do I write the book? Whatever that is. And um, it's a powerful step to take to say, I'm going to ignore all of that because I know as my friend Gina posted the other day, I don't know what my future all holds, but I know who holds my future. Absolutely. And making that, that shift to start to take those steps. So what was it that finally got you off in making that first step to put aside that procrastination and actually take action? Was it a, was it a moment? Was it, um, what happened that made you take the action? Well, it was just, just that ongoing discontent. Mm. It's gotta be something more. Yeah. And then, so I, you know, I would do, do different things at the church where I would do, like I would do Bible studies. I would do different things. I remember one time I was doing like a little talk and there happened to be someone from Toastmasters International in the audience. And, you know, I, I thought I did pretty, pretty well, but I could tell they were looking at, they were like critiquing me the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just pulled, I've been so curious. I pulled them to the side. I said, you know, well, how'd I do? What do you think? You're Toastmaster. And they said, well, you know, you could have stood differently. I mean, they gave me all this little detailed feedback that I would have never thought of. Right. And that's, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to take this to the next level. And that's what prompted me to join Toastmasters International. And then the funny thing, again, my whole time, like, okay, well, how do I become a professional speaker and all of that? I get to Toastmasters and there's someone in my club who trained professional speakers. Oh my God. So, like he and I are friends, this was years ago, he and I are friends to this day, but I took his course and it was a leap of faith because I mean, I, I, I paid him, I, you know, and I, I made back yeah, just on one of his ideas, I mean, I made back what I paid for the course and then some. Right, right. Just applying some of the things that just, you know, it was just a step-by-step -step thing. And then, like, once I got into Toastmasters, people kept telling me, you know what, you need to join the National Speakers Association. Eric, Toastmasters is great, but it's just, it just was in my ear a lot. I get to the National Speakers Association, and then the, I'm in the same club with the person who eventually would write the forward to my book. Whoa. So it's step-by-step. -step. And, and yeah. so the lesson in all of that, and, and something I, I always teach people is that you can't allow perfect to become the enemy of progress. Yes. Yes. And amen on that one. <laughs> I mean, and, that, and I'm not just you know, talking theory. I'm talking something that I've, I've gone through because I can be a perfectionist, but you, you just have to focus on what's the next step. Right. Right. And then once you do that, then the next steps start revealing themselves. And Absolutely. Well, you know what? You're in a big place. Well, and I think it's, it's the testament to when we are obedient and to take the, the first step, the other steps, you know, the things, the staircase starts to appear, right? And, and those connections, right? Like if you had not stepped out to do the speaking at that moment that God placed the Toastmasters person in the audience, right? And then, and then to join Toastmasters International and of taking that class, like just all of those pieces um, that you could not have manufactured on your own, but it took the faith and then the action of trust to take the step for then God to say, okay, now I can reveal to you the next piece. I love that. And I love what you just said, which is going to take us right into this conversation about your book and procrastination, which is you cannot let perfection be the enemy of progress. So often when I'm working with clients, we have that same conversation. Like this is not about perfection, whether it's in their you know, health and wellness journey or in their faith journey or in their business journey. You cannot make it all about perfection. And, and I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, we tend to be perfectionists. So let's talk about your book. Like what inspired you to write it? Um, what is different about it? And why do people need to tackle procrastination? Well, so what inspired me to write it was I, I wanted to have a tool that I could put in people's hands. You know, it's one thing for me to do these workshops or do a keynote presentation, but I wanted something to leave somebody with. Um, 
that wasn't a complicated thing. So I, I started looking at these other books. I mean, some of these procrastination, I know a procrastination book that's like 500 plus pages. You're just going to procrastinate reading that. I'm going to procrastinate reading the procrastination book. Uh, so, so I knew I wanted to make something that was simple. It's, it's an easy read, so to speak, but there's a lot of good information. And so one of the things that makes my book different is I've actually put together a model in the book. It's called the Procrastination Prevention Pyramid. Mm. And the model is based off of, I've done over 28,000 coaching sessions with entrepreneurs and executive leaders. So I came up with like kind of this five-step model that's, that's very specific of things you can do to overcome procrastination and beat procrastination. So, so that's one of the things that really makes my book different. No one else has a procrastination prevention pyramid um, to, to really explain that. And then the other thing is I really speak to specific genetics. Mm. So like, you know, it's one of the things that frustrated me. A lot of these books are cookie cutter. They say, oh, you know, you have to be an early bird. You know, you, you, you don't check your email until noon. It's all a cookie cutter answer. That doesn't work for everybody. Right. Yeah, sometimes if you don't check it, there could be bad consequences depending on what you do. Um, so like I've got tailored suggestions. Like, so if you're a morning person, there's certain things you can, you don't have to be. Right. You know, the key is, you know, we, we all have like a circadian rhythm where mm -hmm. you've got different levels of energy at different points of the day. You know, the key is tailoring your high priority activities to those times when you have the most energy. Mm. So, so I cover that in the book. So if you're more of an evening person, you know, try to do those things that involve creativity in the evening. Mm -hmm. You know, vice versa, if you're the morning person like me, then yeah, get up early and do those things. So my, the guidance in the book is very specific. It's not just the cookie cutter, one size fits all piece. I love that. I love that. Why do you think people struggle so much with procrastination? Well, because it's, it's a silent killer, right? Mm -hmm. And so here's what happens. Like, like, for example, let's say you wait till the like, you have a presentation for your job. You, you wait till the last minute, you, you throw something together, you do it, and then everyone starts to, oh, wow, Aaron, that was great. No, oh, nice job. Yes. So guess what? You start saying, you know what? I work better under pressure. Mm. But that's really, I call that justification for procrastination. But what happens is it's, it's, it would be much better if you started earlier, Right. And it's hard to measure that. And what happens is that there's no like immediate negative consequence when you procrastinate. <laughs> there's no procrastination police that comes in and arrests you, right? <laughs> so you, you think, okay, everything's fine. No problem. Everything's good, but it's not. Yeah. And, you know, if you start a creative project earlier, it's going to be better. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, so you've written this book. Yes. Um, and I don't know about you, but I wrote my book and I find that I still have to open it, right? And remind myself. So how do you deal with procrastination? Do you feel like you've conquered that dragon or is it something that you're really in daily practice about? Yeah. So I titled the book, The Discipline of Now, because it's truly a discipline. Yeah. And I, I like, for, the funny thing is every now and then I'll write like a blog post or something on saying no to things that are outside of you know what you should be doing and it's always around that time that someone offers me something or somebody presents me with this opportunity to be president of this organization or to do this or to do that and i, I literally have to go back and read chapter six of the book <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad it's not just me <laughs> no, it sounds crazy but literally i will go and open up chapter six of my own book to remind right. myself of <laughs> of how I should proceed. Yeah, yeah. But what I love is, I love that you titled it Discipline because discipline takes daily practice and daily action. And I think sometimes we tend to look around at entrepreneurs and go, I want what they have or they're at this level or whatever. And two things I would say is one, like what you see on social media is the highlights, never the bloopers. So you don't really know what's going on. But two, um, you know, run your race and, and be disciplined in what you have to do. Like what you're seeing didn't happen overnight and every level has its devils. So you may be seeing this level of success, but you're not seeing what they're struggling against. And therefore it really is about that daily discipline. I love that you go back and read the book. I love that. 
because I do that and I thought, I should know this. I wrote a book about it, but I have to remind myself. My right. coach, in fact, will say to me sometimes, you know, there's a book about that. <laughs> it's by this woman, Erin Harrigan. You might want to get it. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us, um, so at the end, I'm going to have you tell us where we can find the book, but I want to switch gears and I'd love for you to tell us about the what now movement, yeah. what inspired it. Um, and what, what you saw was missing that led you to start this movement and, and tell us a little more about it. So it, the pandemic ha happened, you know, it really started heating up around the March timeframe. And so you have myself, uh, we had Ted Fells, who's my podcast co-host, also my business partner, and we have Dr. Sharon H. Porter. And we were actually, so we were planning on, we, we actually lived this whole what now thing, right? Because before the pandemic, we were planning on doing this joint venture. We were going to go do a conference together mm -hmm. and get people in this room. And it was going to be great. It was going to be hundreds of people, we have vendors, but then the pandemic changed everything. And we were like, okay, what now? You know, we still want to work together. Right. And then we started noticing that people kept coming to us like, you know, my, I own a restaurant and I can't have people sitting. Um, I can't have people sit in my restaurant anymore. What now? I can only do carry out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting laid off. What now? And, and so that's what inspired us to start the what now movement. And the whole point is to equip people to be prepared for life's unexpected curveballs. Mm. And, and so now you have the answer. The goal is that you have the answer to that question. And you're always thinking, you're thinking, what now, even when things are good? Mm -hmm. How do you set your business up so that it's recession proof or it's pandemic proof? Right. Because it, it, so the, the flip side of it is there are people that are in our network who are doing better now than they ever were. Yeah. Like their money has gone up during the pandemic. And they have the same challenges that we all have. So, so that's really what, that's the essence of the What Now movement. And it, it's a supportive environment. It's a diverse environment. Uh, and it's really about building up entrepreneurs, career professionals, and authors. I love it. How many people are in the network? Right now, it's 1,300, over 1,300. Wow. And, and, and where can we find it? It's, if you go on Facebook, you just type in the What Now movement and request to join the group. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And you guys, so I, so I had the opportunity to speak on Labor Day on Motivation Monday, and I spoke about, yeah. uh, you know, what would seem to be a strange topic um, for entrepreneurs, which is the value of rest. But what I've loved about following it is, as you said, it's so diverse and the content that people are sharing. Um, like I think today we're recording this on uh, Tuesday, September 15th. And I think today's speaker is talking about podcasting, technology, right? So you're right. Today's Technology Tuesday. Yeah. So Talk. tell us, yeah, tell us about the week. Like what are the days and, and the topics? So Mondays, you know, it, it, every day. So Mondays is M's. It's either marketing, mental health, or motivation. Like yesterday we did a marketing Monday. Now today is Technology Tuesday. And we've got Barrett Matthews is going to talk about the technology behind launching your podcast. Mm. Uh, Wednesday is Wellness Wednesday. Thursday is thank, either Thankful or Thought Leadership Thursday. And then Friday is Financial or Fitness. Mm -hmm. and, and then stepping back a little bit. So on Mondays, we do a marketing Monday from the standpoint, every Monday where you can share your promotional links. And like, like a lot of these site these groups are, are funny about you sharing your your right. promotional link but we, yeah. we, we welcome it yeah. the, the key is to do it on marketing monday yeah. so you can put your business out there and I always say you just never know who's watching you That's never it. that could be the next source of business for you and then on fridays we we've added a third f so you have fitness uh you have financial we also have follow mm. so, so we have give everybody the opportunity to put the social media links we pick one so, so one week we focus on Instagram. Okay, everybody, put your Instagram link out. Right. Okay, everybody, today we're going to focus on Twitter. Today yeah. we're going to focus on YouTube. So a lot of resources and tools for the person, people in the group. And I love that. I, I love the whole idea behind it when you first told me about it because it, I, everybody is asking what now. Yeah. And then how do you find, especially 
and, you know, sometimes as an entrepreneur, it can be lonely, right? Because you're walking this journey and nobody else is walking this journey. And so what I love is that you've created this community where maybe you're transitioning from a corporate job into entrepreneurship, maybe by choice, maybe by, you know, nothing to do with you. That's what happened in the pandemic, but it's created this community where you can learn, where you can bring value. Um, and I think it's so needed, which I think explains exactly why it is as big as it is, because people need that information and they can learn. And just like you said, you guys, you know, your procrastination may be, you're thinking, well, I can't join a group like that because, you know, my page isn't perfect or my offer isn't perfect. And hear what Eric said, do not let perfection be the enemy of progress and don't procrastinate. Like that action may be the action that opens the next door, but you got to have the faith and the trust to take the action. And that's the point. That is the point of who we are as God-centered entrepreneurs. So Eric, I have loved our conversation today. Um, I want to ask you two questions that I ask all of our guests, and then I want you to share how people can find you. So the first question is, if you could sum up your hustle with heart journey in one word, what would it be? I would say faithfulness mm. and, and I would say on both sides. I mean, first off with God, I mean, I, God has been faithful yeah. and, and been consistent. And even when I wasn't as doing what I should be doing, That's you know, it. so, so I faithful from that standpoint. And then I think any, to get to the end of your journey, it takes a level of faith, especially because you're not going to so, and this, I heard this somewhere. It's if you knew everything, you wouldn't need faith. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. If you had everything laid out perfectly, why would you need faith? Right. So I, I think that that really is what sums up the journey. It's about being faithful. And I love that. Aren't like, isn't God so faithful, so patient with us that even when we're not doing what, like, sometimes I picture him sort of going, come on, just get it. But he loves us anyway. And he's right. consistent in that. And he's never changing. Oh, I love that. All right. Um, Describe Eric in three words. I would say, well, one word would definitely be resilient. You know, I, I don't let setbacks keep me down. You know, I'm, I'm all, I'm trying to, so I would say resilient. And I would say evolving. Mm, that's a good one. That's another one. I'm, I'm always, I'm trying to find different ways to do things. And I think the what now movement and this whole pandemic, it forces you to evolve. I mean, you know, for example, with the podcast, we had to go, we ended up going to virtual um, as far as doing video before we were just doing audio because the build, our building, our studio building closed because yeah. of the pandemic. So we were forced to go to Facebook Live. We weren't doing Facebook Live before. Right. So that's one that I'm just trying to always evolve. And then I, I'm, I, I strongly believe in integrity. Mm. And, you know, really doing, because there's a certain confidence that comes with knowing that you're doing what you said you would do. Yes. I said I was going to do it. I did it. Oh, love that. So Eric, as we finish out, tell us how we can find you and how we can find the book. Okay. So you can find the book on the discipline of now.com. That's the website, the discipline of now.com. The book is in three formats. It's in paperback, it's in audio, and it's also in ebook format. So that, that's the best way. And then when you go to that site, I mean, you'll see all my contact information, my email address. Um, I mean, again, people that are looking for the What Now Movement can go right to the What Now Movement on Facebook and join the group. Awesome. And you guys, everything will be in the show notes also. So for those of you, you know, who are following along on iTunes or whatever, all of that will be in the show notes and uh, you'll find that there. So Eric, thank you so much for this rich conversation today. Um, I am confident that we have listeners who are shaking their heads going, yep, you're speaking my language. Um, and I'm excited to see how God uses this content. Hey, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you, you make it easy. Oh, uh, <laughs> I do what I can. So thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next time on our next episode.